everyone, welcome back to TSC Connect. I'm Physio Andrea and today we're explaining some of the medical terminology that you might see in your x-ray report. Medical reports can be super overwhelming, especially when they're filled with long Latin based words. So in this video, we'll be deconstructing a typical scoliosis x-ray report. Please keep in mind, the purpose of this video is not to have you interpret your own x-ray or come up with your own treatment plan. It's more so to help decrease the worry or anxiety that may come from scary sounding terms. Here we go. So here's a typical phrase from a scoliosis x-ray report. There is a dextroscoliosis curve in the thoracic region with a Cobb angle of 39 degrees from the superior end plate of T5 to the inferior end plate of L2 with an apex at T10. Whoa, let's break this down. So somewhere in the report, it will indicate the region of your spine that your curve is located. Some people already know because they can see themselves physically in the mirror or other people have told them, and some people don't know where in the body their curve might be located. There are three main regions of the spine, the lumbar, the thoracic, and the cervical. The lumbar region is your lower back. The thoracic is your mid back where all your ribs are attached, and the cervical refers to your neck area. Some people have multiple curves, so you may see more than one of those regions listed on the report. And in this person's case, they have a curve in the thoracic region, or the middle of the back. Dextroscoliosis means that the curve goes towards the right. This may also be listed as convex to the right, or simply curvature to the right. So if a curve is going to the left, you may see the term levoscoliosis. So how do you know which direction a curve is going? Well, we look at the apex. And the apex is the point of the spine, which is shift just further away from the center of the body. So kind of like if you think about a mountain, there's the apex of the mountain. Similarly, in a spinal curve, there's an apex of the spinal curve. So depending on the direction that the apex is shifted, that's how we name whether the curve is going to the left or to the right. Keep in mind that the terms left and right refer to the left and right of the person, not necessarily the image, because the x-ray can be taken from the front or the back and the way that the film is presented. So we're always making sure that we're talking about the left of the person and the right of the person. Next, let's talk about the Cobb angle. This refers to the degree of a curve measured on an x-ray that indicates the size of the curve. It's called the Cobb angle because it's named after orthopedic surgeon James Robert Cobb, who first developed the measurement. When a scoliosis x-ray is taken from the back view, the Cobb angle indicates how big the curve is from side to side. And when a scoliosis x-ray is taken from the side view, the Cobb angle indicates how scooped or how rounded your spine is. Let's look at the number of degrees. And in this case, it's 39 degrees. Here's a chart from the SOSORT 2016 guidelines, which are linked in the description below, that shows how the medical community generally categorizes curves based on size. As you can see from this table here, the bigger the Cobb angle, the greater the size of the curve. The report also talks about end plates. The superior end plate is the top border of the vertebra that's included within the curve, and the inferior end plate refers to the border of the lowest vertebra included. So in this person's case, that means that the curve spans from T5, so the top border of the fifth vertebra of the thoracic region, all the way down to L2. So it includes the lower border of the second vertebra of the lumbar region. Reading this report, this statement would correspond with an x-ray that looks like this. Again, it's a dextroscoliosis, or it's a curve that goes to the right. It's in the thoracic region or the middle of the back and the Cobb angle is 39 degrees and you can see here it runs from the top border of T5 to the bottom border of L2 and the pointiest part or the apex is at T10. X-ray reports may or may not include other information. For example, it may talk about the alignment of the head compared to the pelvis. It may mention any surgical hardware present 
or any other joint or bone features like degeneration, narrowing of certain spinal canals, or it may also highlight some findings about the heart or lungs. We can't cover all those options in this video, so if you see other terms that you don't understand, ask your trusted healthcare professional to explain them to you in layman's simple terms. Given all this, please note that treatment options highly vary depending on so many factors, not just the size of your curve. If you're wondering what treatments are available for you, contact a healthcare professional who has experience with scoliosis so they can assess all the different factors aside from your curve size and offer you options. If you have questions, drop them in the comments below. Thanks for watching and we hope that decreases some anxiety over the large medical terms that you might see in your x-ray report. We'll see you next time.